welcome back to week two three i think this is the third week or second week of summer anime 2024 where i judge the most recent episode sunday's the cutoff osan newbie adventures today's episode doesn't count i'm referring to last monday's episode and i'm gonna rate them according to how much i enjoyed them in my own personal preference first up exploration hero this anime is so peak, man. Oh my god, I can't believe an anime like Exploration exists. It's like better in solo leveling. It's like solo leveling, but with lollies. It's so good. No, it's not. This shit's dropped. There's no interest for it. Episode 1 and 2 did okay. And then I think a lot of people just... <laughs> I think there was a lot of hype from the source material but then by episode two a lot of people are already complaining and by episode three all the interest died off so i'm like yep another case of an anime a seasonal anime where the first couple episodes are amazing or you know above average and then it shows the true colors right people's true nature shows by episode three or four no one gives a fuck dropped you don't care i'm dropping it same with raising kids y'all never actually gave a fuck about these shows but it's to be expected every new season we have a bunch of animes that Start off decent, then it gets dropped. Gimai Seikaku days with my stepsister. I think that it's probably here again. It was an interesting episode. The filler animation is just funny to me now. I think it's that I <laughs> say what you will. I, I don't know. The movies, the, the anime is trying to seem like a fucking cinema, but having these long stretched out animations. But rather than me being immersed and seeing like a, a, seeing as like a, a cinema, I see it as a fucking meme. I think it's hilarious. There was a scene where the girl and the guy was eating for fucking 40 seconds and I stared into the screen doing nothing. 40 seconds, bro, of nothing. And it's trying to set the mood. I get it. But don't fucking tell me that this is the best thing you've ever seen. I don't believe that shit. I think it's trying to be fucking pretentious by trying to be a cinematic movie while at the same time suffering. Because it just seems like a fucking meme to me. But regarding the actual story. Regarding the actual story. She made a lot of moves. It was shocking when she actually approached. Not just like on his doors. Not just like pouncing on his bed. But then to actually say, will you buy my body? And I'm like, oh my god. And yeah, it seems like fan service, but then it's like a little bit more than that in terms of like her psyches and what she values and how she needs to make money and she wants to be a girl boss and stuff like that. I, I, I can see the story, right? I, I, I can see that it's not just some kind of cheap story. So I'm going to put it in great tier for now. Next up, let's take some other animes. I think that... This shit's mid. Am I right or am I right? Yo, nobody remembers me? I don't know. First episode, I gave it a pretty fair shot. To really try to absorb the source material. Really try to get into the lore. And okay, it, it, it was like interesting enough. And I'm like, oh, okay. Are, are they going to make this into like a really compelling show that's going to make me think a lot? By episode two, I mean, we saw the girl, Rene. She's cute, I guess. She's cunny. But the writing doesn't really seem to be as good as I hoped it would be. Because we just free her. Some kind of monster shows up. Because she's like, I don't know. Like, Rene is like a danger. And I'm like, alright. The fight scenes are... It's okay. The fight scenes aren't bad. The fight scenes are pretty good. But it's just... When I'm watching this, I don't feel... Like, when I watch like an 8 out of 10 anime, I know that it's like a special moment. When I watch this, it feels like it's trying to be like an 8 out of 10. But episode 2 felt like just like a mid-anime. And it was set up. Episode 3 is going to be a great clash. And you don't need just fight scenes to be amazing. Episode 2 had fight scenes too. But I'm just talking about the dialogue and everything going on. I don't know. I... It's a hot take. But I'm putting this shit in mid for now, bro. Straight up. Like, if you really think about what happened in episode 2. I didn't get a sense of like, this is amazing, this is goaded. I'm like, okay, this plot is kind of interesting, I guess. There's some mysteries, but I'm not really compelled by it. I'm just kind of watching it as long. And, you know, based on the fucking viewership performance too, I think that a lot of people also have the same opinion where they're like, yeah, this is not... I don't know why this shit was so hyped up. Everyone glazed the fuck out of this show. I, I've yet to seen the hype about it, but it is only episode two. Some enemies take, a, you know, a couple episodes to... Get to that fucking turning point. 
But right now, as it is, I, I think I'm going to put it in mid, to be honest. What's another fucking mid anime? Failure frame? I put this shit in mid, too. Most recent episode. It was definitely one of the weaker episodes. Because, like, the source material, like, what it's adapting, what do we do? Like, we're getting out of the labyrinth. It's pretty much like a wrap-up. An elf is getting fucking chased. We take care of the garbage, you know, NPCs. The villains are very just creepy. They're not actually intimidating. They're just creepy and gross. Main character does the paralyzed shit. I get it. The CGI. Oh my fucking god, dude. The amount of CGI that they use. It's not even about the amount. It's the transitions between regular drawing and CGI that just keeps fucking pissing me off. Bro, I keep watching that shit. And it's just like, ugh. It's just so jarring. Luke, what's going on, my man? We got a celebrity in here. My man was averaging over 2,000 concurrent viewers in la yesterday's stream. We got a fucking celebrity in here. Nicholas Light? Nah. This is a Lucas Light. How you doing, my man? Failure frame, last episode, though. I'm putting this shit in mid, bro. What's another fucking mid anime? Giji Harum. Giji Harum. Where do you think this is going, guys? Where do you think Giji Harum is going? I think that I am not the target audience. When I watched the most recent episode of Giji Harum, I thought about four different instances where I'm like, I want to fucking just end the recording and go watch SAO or Dangers in My Heart. That's how I was actually fucking feeling, bro. It was insane. I don't know. First episode, I get the appeal, right? It felt a bit cringe, but I'm like, okay, the girl's like having a bunch of different personas, you know, all the different dirty types. I get it. It's a pseudo harm. But then there's no actual fucking story. And maybe it's because the manga is that format, right? It's not supposed to have an overarching story of some kind of like, you know, his progression. Every episode has just been the same fucking skit over and over again. And I'm just like, already tired of it by episode three. I'm sorry. I'm dropping this shit. I'm sorry. Like, I gave it a try. I watched it. And I genuinely was cringing, watching it, thinking I'd rather watch another Community Poll series. I'm dropping it. What's another fucking series that I thought was shit? Hmm. Let's think about Oshinoko. What y'all think about Oshinoko? Oshinoko... <laughs> Let's talk about the performance of the videos. My god, no one gives a fuck about Oshinoko on YouTube anymore, bro. The YouTube audience is non-existent. Like, across the board, Oshinoko is just not it anymore, man. I thought that it was enjoyable. I, in fact, I, I'm gonna put this in peak, like, unironically. I will put this in peak. I really enjoyed the moment of <laughs> Abiko-sensei getting called out by her colleague. The whole banter there, calling each other out, saying, you draw a fucking bullshit battle shonen. You literally are the author of My Caveman Academia. You literally make Unga Boonga Slayer. Like, that shit garbage. And then the whole banter back and forth of, like, you don't even cross 50 mil, you know, sales on your manga. Don't talk to me. That part was very enjoyable. I enjoyed that a lot. It got heated. But, like, it is actually appalling to see the lack of interest of this series on YouTube anymore, and it makes a lot of sense. I could already foresee it by the end of season one. The interest died down by the time episode one ended for season one, because again, people were captivated by the murder mystery plot. They don't give a fuck about idols. They don't give a fuck about background theater place. Okay, I'm sorry. I know that the idol theme was a core thing. I know I know media and, and like, you know, idol industry shit, entertainment is the core, you know, focus. But beyond that, the audience was mainly catfished by the murder mystery plot that never got delivered by the end of season one. So many people are hating on this season, but I'm like, you know what? It's just not the target audience, but so many people got filtered out. By the time you got to season two, bro, like, it's dead. It's dead on arrival. I still enjoyed it, though. I think, I think that um, Doku Kobo is cooking with the animation and, like, with the limited amount of, like, exciting material, the fact that they're still able to, you know, keep the yapping engaging... I enjoyed it. It just sucks that, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of JP viewers, but Western audience, they don't give a fuck. I'll still put it in peak, though. I'll still put it in peak. What other anime shall we rate here? Um, what y'all think about the elusive samurai, bro? This shit fucking dookie. No, 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 no. I think that the elusive samurai, it was definitely one of the weaker episodes. 
because like episode one was crazy. How do you compete with that? Episode two actually did an amazing follow-up episode to keep the hype going, the betrayal with the uncle, you know, finding our retainers, fighting. That shit was hype. Episode three was now we're like taking some low time, right? We're just chilling out. We're chilling out. We're setting stuff up. This is our home base. We have a bunch of followers. Here are our friends. Let's get to know them, right? It was like a slice of life episode and just set up. I think next episode's gonna be hype. There's like an archery guy who's gonna show up. And if he's gonna be like a god at, you know, aiming and shooting arrows, we're gonna see some crazy animations with our young lord dodging everything. But I think that, um, good or great? Low key, I'm gonna put it in good. Eh, I wasn't really feeling it. I'm not gonna lie, like a lot of this shit, I, like, I, I guess it was funny. Some of the stuff that was happening with like fucking, you know, Yoshirige and his followers and the paid actor scenes. There was some comedy there. Getting to know Kojiro, Akane, Ak what was her name? Uh, Ayako, I think, and Suzuku or something. Shizuku. Yeah, it's cute, but eh, it's just a just, just slice of life of characters that I'm not really invested into, so it's kind of weak for me. I'll put it in good. I think next episode's gonna be fucking amazing, though. What else? Let's talk about Slime. Slime came back. Slime came back and, uh... <laughs> Slime fucking sucks. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. There is a video we're gonna watch later. Is a, there's a video we're gonna watch later. And it's called this. <laughs> Tensura fell off, apparently. <laughs> A lot of people have the same mindset right now of Tensura. A lot of people can't handle it yet. I think a lot of people had uh, wrong expectations after coming off of season one and season two. And yes, there were some yappings in season two. In fact, there was like four or five back-to-back -back fucking meeting episodes before going to a Walpurgis, for sure. But if you compare the material in season two and season one, it was very fast-paced relative to season three. It was very, very exciting. Now, right now, it's oof. Though that audience that like I think a lot of people have already even dropped slime from their YouTube reactions. It's actually sad. Sad as in like I'm not how do I explain this? I'm not I'm not shitting on other reaction channels for dropping slime. It's simply just numbers that the audience doesn't care about it. But it's just like, you know, it's Tensura. It sucks that like, you know, Tensura contents, you know, kind of just getting throttled because the people are getting tired of the yap, man. I think that the most recent episode of Tensura, though, it's not dookie. It's minimum good, if not great. I actually did enjoy Shion popping off against the Dagoro brothers. Dagoro fucking just throwing his kids to us like he's a deadbeat dad and we're fucking doing babysitting. The initial half was a bit of yapping with Milan showing up and, you know, setting up the dragons and stuff, right? Um, maybe it's top of good. Maybe it's top of good or, or over here. I'm, I'm not too sure. I did enjoy Shion popping off, though. And then even like the Mao hockey stuff and the horse and the bull not even phased because they're too dumb. And then us like settling the centuries worth of war or whatever between the bovine and the, the fucking bulls because what? They saw how Shion was strong and it's like, oh my god, Rimuru's even stronger? I'm not sure where this should go. Right now, I'm probably gonna put it in a, like fucking top of grade for now. I'll shift this around at the end of the tier list and try to figure out like, how do I really feel about it? Next anime. Let's talk about Nokutan. What y'all think about Nokutan? And no, Nokutan does not deserve to have its own deer tier. I think that having a deer tier is bullshit. You are creating a separate category to shield the show from the criticisms that it deserves. No, nah, man, you can't just fucking have a deer. I, th I thought about it. I'm like, it's a fucking scam. All these other shows are getting put in the fucking gauntlet and getting scrutinized. And this bullshit brain rot show suddenly gets away with it just because it's fucking brain rot. Nah, we got to fucking talk about Nokotan. The most recent episode, I think it was definitely the weakest episode. Say what you will about the new character showing up, Bashimeme or something. I think Nokotan just has too much expectations. Nokotan has way too much expectations and too much hype surrounding it. It's what happens when you go viral. All the eyes on you, the spotlights on you. You have something to deliver upon. People are calling you the next Nichijou or the Nichijou killer, bro. How could it possibly stand up to that? I don't think it's going to be a Nichijou killer. I've never seen it, but I've seen clips of it. 
And I, I understand the brain rot, but it's like, I don't think Nokuta necessarily needs to be that. The Bully Maguire scene was kind of funny, right? A lot of people apparently hate Koshitan. How do you guys feel about Koshitan, man? You thought episode two was the weakest? I actually enjoyed the, um, what's it called? The trivia. It, it, it felt like that whenever the teacher pulled out all the kids and we had like a game show going on, something about that kind of format, I just always enjoy. Episode one was obviously a special one. People actually hate Koshitan, dude. And I was thinking about it. How do I feel about Koshitan? Do you guys actually enjoy Koshitan's like cliche? Of her just always being like the straight girl and not straight as in heterosexual, but you know, amongst the chaos, she's trying to be like the, the reasonable voice and trying to call out the bullshit that's happening. Some people are calling it annoying. And the more I thought about it, I'm like, are they cooking? Are they cooking? Maybe Koshitan is annoying. I love Nokotan though. Anytime she does the cute fucking noon thing, Anytime she's on screen, it's a delight. I'm not sure how I feel about Koshitan. But the episode in itself, I think that it should go in the good tier. I don't think it was necessarily great. I think it's a good tier. And the more I think about it, why the fuck is Days of My Step Stepsister in great tier? Just because the hoe fucking offered her body, bro? That's it? Now, br now bring this shit back down. You need to get taken down a notch. Hold the fuck up. Nothing deserves a great tier right now. And in fact, I put this shit down too. We need to be more strict about this. Too many shows are fucking getting to peak and great, bro. We're glazing too many goddamn shows. We need to actually fucking think about it. Really think about it. I'm put. I, I'm. I'm demoting everything. Nothing deserves peak right now. I'm putting this shit down. I'm putting this shit down too. And amongst these shows, I enjoy Tensor the most. Maybe like this. Yeah. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Like this. I. I. The, the stepsister fucking selling body line. It got to me. The horny got to me. I, I need to post that clarity needs to set in. Hold up, hold up. I, I think this is better right now. We need to recalibrate. Next. Let's talk about Perry. What y'all think about the Perry anime? Hmm. Honestly? Perry anime? It's either top of good or bottom of great. The fight against the spear guy. And he didn't even parry, bro. He just dodged the entire time. And he was like a spear sovereign. The, one of the greatest spear users in the fucking nation. And my man didn't even parry. He was just fucking sidestepping. And already from there, the cracks on the ground, you could tell like the, like the show was like hinting that, yeah, while he is amazing at parrying, his other skills that, you know, like little fire, the whole revelation that his little fire is already greater than like the wizard sovereign who's been doing this shit for like 200 plus years. Because no one's crazy enough to fucking go all of that in. Like who, who is going to like be so proficient that level one magic, right? This is bottom tier magic, but he only maxed out bottom tier magic. And now he became a fucking local legend. Bro became a guy that got rejected at every school, but the local legend now is like, nah, he went in and went to every school and he became a legend for the kids to, you know, get hyped up about. I thought it was a pretty good end. I thought it was a pretty good episode. I'm gonna put this in the bottom of grade tier. Maybe it should go top of good. I'm not sure. It's relative to each other. I'm gonna put it there for now. I did enjoy the most recent episode. Next up. Let's talk about too many losing heroines. This show? Loki better than Rush today? Yo, don't tell that Rush today, people. Loki better than Rush today? I put this shit in peak. Genuinely. I, I, is it top of grade or peak? I can't tell. It's, it's there for now. Like, I'm actually enjoying it a lot. I, like, I'm, I'm half the time I'm fucking pissed off watching this shit. <laughs> but, the, but the other, but me being pissed off actually, when I get heated, it, it makes for great ranting content. And the reaction is like, people enjoy it when I get mad. That's the reason Dreaming Boy is a realist, it's so fucking well. Like, <laughs> I hate that blue haired girl. Anna, that bitch, I hate her. I genuinely hate that girl. She deserves everything that's going for her. But why are you expecting a bunch of dumb middle school kids? I'm not even sure if they're high school, middle school. How do you expect a bunch of like dumb 16, 15 year old kids to act behaviorally, right? They're just a bunch of dumb kids with a bunch of hormones coursing through them and they can't fucking think rationally. Of course, they're going to do some dumb shit. I just hate how Anna just like 
steps all over the main character and then i hate the main character because he is such a fucking beta cuck that just takes it all yes he kind of stands up to the bento prices and will kind of push back but it's just like motherfucker you are a floor mat you deserve to get stepped on but suddenly a separate fucking relationship triangle swarming lemon is into the main character the alcoholic teacher has a friend who is the crazy nurse who has a bunch of fucking bugs across the school classrooms so she's actively fucking listening to the dialogue and creating these different charts of potential relationships dude these teachers need to go to jail that twist though honestly was great like i don't know if it should climb into peak maybe it should maybe it should man i don't know i'm uh mm. i'm gonna put it in peak for now we'll recalibrate we'll recalibrate later next up let's talk about Osun newbie adventurer and I think that it's either top of grade or peak, right? It was the pop-off episode. I have to give a peak. It was a pop-off episode and Rick no longer is continuing with this bullshit mindset of I'm weak. Because remember, his senpais all made him think that he was so weak because they just gaslit him. In doing so, he became one of the strongest people ever. This motherfucker down here, you know, Noor will never figure it out. He is so dense. He will never figure it out. But we got our man, man. We got our man, Rick here, though. Rick is already figuring out. He's like, yeah, I'm strong. He even declared it. He's like, I'm going to be the pirate king. <laughs> Not the pirate king, but, you know, he just, he said that I will slay that legendary monster that the previous hero would never slay or something, right? There was like a specific terminology. We had a power fantasy of destroying the eldest sibling of the shitty noble, you know, sibling group. They all fucking sucked. And Rick delivered. It was a great episode overall. I put this shit in peak. Yeah, I I'm confidently put this shit in peak. Next up, let's talk about Tower of God, man. What y'all think about Tower of God? I don't think I can put it in great. I sorry, I don't think I can put it in peak. It's either good or great. The first half of the episode, I'm not sure how many people felt about it. But the amount of rules being explained is like, holy shit. I understand that like they're trying to be more creative with these fights. They're trying to not just have Unga Boonga fighting, even though at the end, it just devolves into a 1v1. Someone actually commented one of the funniest things on the Tower of God video. And they said, I am not even going to bother memorizing or understanding the rule set because I've seen shows like this where all these rules get tossed out the window as later on it's just gonna be 1v1 of bomb versus you know love and is he wrong is he wrong he's not wrong and I'm like yeah you kind of right there's a lot of different mechanics going on right a guy has to stay one person has to stay in their room you gotta collect like a team of fucking seven you gotta end you gotta get like secure six separate rooms the last room you gotta secure a 608 you gotta fucking have these connectors with the different batteries and you gotta press the one red button for the fuck I don't know there's so many goddamn rules but like and then there was the um slice of life moments with AK Raptor and Wang Nun and the rest of the crew. I just think that you can't like you cannot expect people to give a fuck about brand new roster of characters that we have no idea about. When you have these slice of life moments, they can only be done and people will enjoy it if they already know that group core. If this is Andorsi, if this are my man Rack, Blue Turtle, you know, hot Shibisu, the gang, doing all that shit. Yeah, I'd be fine to do it. But it's just like, who gives a fuck about these new characters? Because we haven't had the time to get attached to them. So I'm sure the first half kind of suffered a lot. The second half got a little bit more exciting. Bomb just going in, using his, like, time stop. I think it's not time stop. He just, like, shock and demolition. So it's the skill that Quant taught him, right? And then uh, doing all the ballsy shit. It was pretty fun. And then Love versus Bomb got a little bit of teaser at the end. I don't think that it is necessarily peak I think that it was great and the more I think about it maybe losing heroines deserves a tier down below yeah I think this is a more accurate I think newbie Osan adventure throughout the whole episode was fucking peak it was a pop-off episode everything built up for it it deserved that special spot everything else I don't know I didn't have that same level of oomph to me, so I'm gonna put that there for now. Next up, let's talk about Isekai Shikaku. 
Yo, low key, this shit like either peak or I don't know. The comedy like hit. Ulto, bro, the Ulto playing the soundtrack and humming. During the serious moments in the, at night, I'm like, yo, is this auto play? I was just like memeing around. I'm like, oh my god, this soundtrack is peak, bro. I bet it's fucking auto. And then later on, it re got revealed that it was auto. The comedy slaps. The comedy genuinely fucking slaps in this show. Konosuba esque, if I may say so myself. <sighs> Does it deserve peak? Or is it great? It was funny as fuck. Maybe top of great. We need to lessen the amount of peaks. If everything is peak, then nothing is peak. I need to be more strict about this. I think that it's definitely great, perhaps peak, but I'm going to put this down here for now and we'll recalibrate later on at the end. Next up, Wistoria. And Wistoria, the... Yeah, I put this in peak. Yeah, I put this shit in peak. I would. I would. I'm not sorry. Wistoria... It just keeps delivering. How the fuck is this show not having any downtime? And like the first half could be seen as a bit of downtime because like the threat isn't all there. We saved this new cunny girl named Iris, right? And we're fighting this <laughs> Geodude looking ice monster. And yeah, we got to use our new magical equipment. Rusty is a new roommate that we found, femboy character. Great. But, um, you know, I, I was like, why is this new girl getting so much attention? Sure, the animation scene using the magical gear was pretty hype, but it, 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 the threat wasn't really there. It was hype, though. And then it got revealed. Bro, Iris is a watcher. She got sent by the Magia vendor to fucking scout potential new recruits. And then we got the other Magia vendor council. The middle seat's missing. The four is there. And we get to see the different people, you know, conflicting and clashing. Elfie does not give a fuck. She's not even looking at anybody. She is straight up looking out the fucking window. The other three... I hate the winds, Magia Vendor. She way too cocky. The, her attitude of like, oh, please bring people. That's going to drag me down. It's like, I bet you're fucking bottom rank down here. Thor? Very funny. Very cool. I love how he was like, fuck it. We ball. I don't give a fuck. Bro can't use magic. I'm in. I don't give a fuck. Yo, a dwarf? Fuck it. I'm in. Thor is very open-minded. Is willing to do anything. I love his design. The electric faction. And then the red hair guy, the fire faction dude, he never opened his eyes. And he had his legs crossed. And he uh, de-escalated the friction between Thor and the, you know, the, the green girl. And I was like, damn. This guy doesn't open his eyes and he's like saying this shit. You know that he's respected. Already you can kind of sell the different hierarchies and who respects who. And the craziest thing is, we haven't even seen who is the middle dude. They were talking about different factions as well in the story. It was like Fire Faction, Earth Faction. Earth Faction for some reason got shit on during the intermission scene which I thought was pretty funny. I wonder if that is the Earth Faction in the middle, but I don't know. We're missing the head Magia vendor. He must be one of the greatest Magia vendor, but they're hiding that person, so we'll save that for now. And who knows? Might not even be a he. It could be a waifu, right? And then the threat of like a celestial host, remember? The barrier in the sky is being upheld, but if it breaks down, we're fucked. The Titans are going to attack. And then we have like some kind of magic festival we're gonna get a tournament rock bro we're gonna get a fucking tournament rock next episode moving onwards oh my god i know that next episode next week there's like a hiatus but it's totally fine recap episode take your fucking time bro this shit has been delivering every week peak 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 bro next what do we got ah and that concludes Summer 2024, week three. No, it doesn't. It just gotta go down. It's just every episode, bro. I thought the plot twists are fucking ending. I thought the plot twists are ending, but it's like, nah. You think we're out of plot twists? Fuck you. Guess who the girl was in the playground? The girl that had Adia's eyes and Masatsuka was learning Russian to talk to back in the day. It was Masha. And I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, just when I thought their love triangle got split because, you know. Yes, even though it's Wincest, I think that Yuki gets relegated from the competition no matter how hard she competes and, like, teases. I just don't think we're going the incest route. So I'm like, all right, that situation got diffused and we got Adia. But it's like Masha stepping up to the table. And it's looking so cruel because Masha knows how much 
she like uh, her sister loves Masatsuka. In fact, we had an entire flashback. The first half of the episode, bro, was just about Arya and her <laughs> desire to be good and want to win, but her teammates are trash. And she's like, God damn, I'm literally in classroom of the elite D class, bro. Everyone fucking sucks here. How do I overcome this? And Masatsuka's like, listen, Suzune. You need to understand how to use the tools around you. You need to fucking utilize them. <laughs> it felt a little bit like it, it didn't, but like Masatsuka was like much, much, much wholesome way, right? Of like, you need to understand how things are going to work out and stuff like that. And then she got the dove and then there was like a dance scene which got off screen, but it was so nice. And Masatsuka taking Arya's hand when she was getting approached by everyone else. Bro, it was so cute. It was so cool. And then they hit it with the spicy fucking, you know, controversy at the end with Masha potentially being... No, it, it's not potentially. I think Masha pretty much confirmed is that girl. But like, <laughs> wouldn't it be crazy if Masatsuka has like an evil twin? Or like there's someone that looks like Masatsuka? And his name is Masatsuka? Or has some kind of Sa in, in it? The Sa-kun, right? The, the tricky thing right now is... It's pretty much 99.99999% right that it is masha that it is masatsuka back in the day right there's a lot of things even the hugging and the head pats he was even reminiscent so after the divorce happened with mom and dad i'm sure he went to cry and, Mas and masha consoled him right everything just it fits in but it's not confirmed you know everything is incredibly heavily heavily implied but there's no direct confirmation just yet and they could hit us with some bullshit of being like yeah sakun actually there's this other guy named like massage chuka or some shit and it's like a different dude that just looks like masachka and the eyes are covered up from the pendant you just never know you know even though it's looking like it's incredibly likely you never know what they show. They could hit us in the back of the head with a fucking steel chair and be like, psych, that was another dude, bro. Like, you just never really know. Now, let's look at our tier list and recalibrate according to what I thought was actually really good. I think that these three definitely stand amongst top. I think that these were great for sure. In fact, I feel like I might want to peek this shit into the top into peak because ah, I don't know. I'm gonna put this. Yeah, these three really are special for that most recent episodes. I think these were all great. These are good for what it was. And I don't feel bad about placing these two down here. Genuinely. I, I think that it was a mix of setup and just like failure frame was just set up and finding the slime. And uh, I don't know. It's just like I don't really give a fuck, bro. Like, give me the hype that I was expecting. Like, get, like it was kind of interesting with the school classmates perspective and seeing different factions, but it just didn't really do it. I don't know. I think it was honestly mid. And I think that maybe I'm being too harsh and nobody remembers me, but like based on what I watched, it feels like it's trying to be smart and it feels like it's trying to be good, but like, I don't know. I just didn't have that feel. Like maybe it should be down. Maybe it should be good here. Like, I, I just feel like it's mid. Maybe it's a hot take, but I watched it and I was like, I don't know. I think it was mid. And again, this tier list is basically just my preference of the most recent episode with the Sunday being cut off. Let me know what you guys think. And you want to cry about this shit? You want to cry? Why? How could Mr. Anime Man that I watch on YouTube have a different opinion about the fucking anime? Get a fucking grip, pussy, and I'll see you next week.